Welcome to this week's security report. I'm Paul McAdam. Thanks for joining us. On January 16, Sergeants Kenyatta Bishop, Rodwell Downer, and Charlie Ned, with Corporals Benaya Reynolds and Constables Javed Fraser and Latasha Johnson, stationed at the number five station, conducted road safety lectures and awareness exercises to the Zealand Primary, Litchfield Primary, and number eight primary schools in West Coast Probeis. That same day, 108 students and 13 teachers from the Dharmic Ramakrishna Primary School in Kitty benefited from a similar traffic awareness lecture. This was also conducted by traffic ranks, this time from the Kitty Police Station, spearheaded by Lance Corporal Gion Johnson. The teachers and students benefited from an informative lecture conducted by the team on the correct use of the roadways, curb drills, and safety for pedestrians. Students from the respective schools were placed into groups which formed school safety patrol teams, after which practical training exercises were carried out to ensure that the youngsters grasped the knowledge and importance of the activity. On January 17th, Sergeant Romes Davidson and Corporal Andrew Ramkison of the Regional Police Division No. 2, Pomeroon Spanam, conducted a lecture with the hire car and minibus drivers at the Anna Regina car park, where the following topics were discussed. Conduct of drivers, ensuring safety of passengers, address code, driving under the influence, overloading of vehicles, and a few other topics. Some 50 drivers attended the session. January 17 also saw at the Indigenous Conference Hall in Letham, commander of the Region 9 District, Superintendent Keith On King, and coordinator Corporal Jennifer Griffith, launching their first youth group. The Trailblazer Youth Group will cater for all youths in the Letham community. They will be meaningfully engaged in different activities that will be beneficial both of their physical and mental growth with development. That same day, the Commander Superintendent Keaton King also held a muster parade and barroom inspection at divisional headquarters for the Letham Police ranks at the station. Superintendent King expected 39 ranks on parade, included parts of the Mounted Branch and Immigration Department, after which he also inspected the barracks and compound. The commander commended them for their efforts and posture. He encouraged them to continue building on the foundation since appearance and conduct is critical and gives all the presumption of service to be expected from the individual or organization. And the next day, January 18, saw 26 ranks from Regional Divisions No. 4A receiving elections preparedness training. They were trained on the use of force, the use of force continuum, and elections day offenses on the Public Order Act, Chapter 16, Section 3. The session was held at the Brigdown Police Station and was conducted by Superintendent Carl Wilson, the OIC or officer in charge of the No. 2 subdivision, Princess Street Agricola. The Ghana Police Force on January 21 hosted its first Joint Services Study Day of 2020 at the Police Officers Mess Annex Evlery. This event saw presentations from stakeholders on their respective services' presentation for the upcoming general and regional elections. And on January 22nd, commissioning the Diamond Golden Grove $143 million magistrate's court, His Excellency President David Granger said the coalition administration is pursuing a policy of regional development. Easier access to justice, he explained, is part of this effort. We now have courts in every region in Burimawaini, at the Quero, Mabaruma, Matthews Ridge, at Pamroon, Subanam, and Regina, Charity and Suddy. Esukibo Islands, West Demerara, Leguan, Leonora, Breeden Hoop, Wakinam and Wales. Demerama Hike at Coven John, Georgetown. Mahaika Providence, Parandam, Vigilance, and now here at Diamond Grove. Mahaika Borbis at Blairmont, Fort Wellington. Maikoni and Weldad, East Borbis Quarantine at Albion, Mibikuri, New Amsterdam. Number 51 Village, Reliance, Sisters, Springlands, and Wim. In the Kuyuni Marble. Mazaruni, Bartik and Cameron. Pataru Siparuni, Madia. Lupununi, Tai Shalton. Anai, Karasabai, and Lethem. And in the Upper Damarara Babis region, Kokwani and Linden. So the entire country will be covered in due course. The court is expected to serve some 70,000 East Bank Damarara residents. According to the Attorney General and the Minister of Legal Affairs, Basil Williams, SC, it will also improve access to justice, particularly in Region 4. The importance of access to justice cannot be overstated as it is crucial to the maintenance of the rule of law. When people get access to justice to the justice system, they are empowered. 
as it is one of the prime mechanisms for persons to exercise their legal rights. These legal rights are enshrined in the Constitution and are found in our statutes and are declared in various international instruments to which Guyana is a signatory. Brief remarks were also made by Bar Association President Tenny Hustie and Chief Justice Roxon George Wilshire, detailing the vision of the court constructed by PD Contracting Company was Chancellor Yonet Cummings Edwards. This court boasts modern equipment and technology. You will see when you take a visit to the court upstairs, there will be Skype, or there is, as a matter of fact, Skype equipment and court recording units for the taking of evidence. So no longer the long hand way of taking evidence. We have facilities for the differently abled persons. We have a wheelchair ramp. We have an elevator, which is specially designed uh, washrooms to accommodate wheelchair access. And we will even designate parking the compound for wheelchair bound witnesses, litigants, and other persons visiting these halls of justice. We also have a domestic violence unit where members of the public can come and have their matters dealt with or speak to probation officers or social protection officers in private and in the comfort of uh, uh, the, the courtroom, the space, uh, the office as provided. We also have their holding facilities for prisoners and a police outpost in this building. Now for some highlights from the Ghana Defense Force. The Ghana People's Militia, or GPM, has been recognized as the best unit for 2019. Chief of Staff Brigadier Patrick West presented the award on January 16 to Commandant of the GPM, Colonel Raul Jerick, at the plenary of the annual officers' conference at the officers' mess at Base Camp in Ghana. And on January 17, the 2-1 Artillery Company did not disappoint the thousands who filled the environs of the KTC wall to catch a glimpse of their fireworks display to commemorate the historic milestone of Ghana's first oil. Chief of Staff Brigadier Patrick West and fellow officers were joined by ExxonMobil officials and other stakeholders to witness the display, which started promptly at 22.30 hours and ended at 22.42 hours to the loud applause of those citizens who witnessed the event. The Ghana Defense Forces Medical Laboratory on January 22nd received the thumbs up for efficiency and maintenance of the appropriate standards from the Ghana National Bureau of Standards. Head of the Bureau's Certification Department, Al Fraser, handed over the renewed certificate for continuing to maintain the GYS 170 standard, a general requirement for the operation of laboratory. Lieutenant Colonel Natasha Stanford received the certificate on behalf of the force. A team from the Bureau conducted an external audit of the lab last December in preparation for the recertification. Officer commanding of the Forces Medical Center, Major Fidel Fedricks, noted that during the process, standards had to be upgraded and the manuals updated to ensure that everything was in compliance with the GNBS standards, and also to ensure that the lab provides the best quality of service for members of the force and their immediate family. Laboratory Supervisor Bonita Richards explained that the lab is mandated to attain at least 85% proficiency for the recertification. She said, quote, we have done that and we are also doing a lot of work to ensure that our services can be increased in 2020, end of quote. The lab was first certified in 2018. Certification lasts for two years. And the Ghana Defence Forces Boxing Champions leading rating Colin Lewis and Corporal Desford Amsterdam are currently in Santa Clara, Cuba on a three-month training stint in preparation for the Olympics boxing qualifier slated for March in Argentina. They are accompanied by boxing coach Terence Poole. He said the boxers have been showing steady improvement and he's very enthusiastic about them getting an opportunity to represent Guyana at the Olympics, stating that, quote, it is a sacrifice for them to be here and so they are trying their best as we remain hopeful of this wonderful opportunity that lies ahead. They are extremely committed, end of quote. Two other Guyanese boxers are also participating in the exercise. And the Ghana Defense Forces troops of Base Camp in Ghana and Base Camp Stevenson paraded at battle musters at their bases on January 22. The parades are part of the forces' preparations for the conduct of security duties, including patrols, during the weeks leading up to the national, general and regional elections scheduled for March 2 this year. The Joint Services Partners will be engaged in providing internal security before, during and after the elections in order to ensure that citizens and communities remain safe and orderly during this time. 
The parades are designed to allow for the confirmation of troop strengths and evaluate their readiness. And the troops of base camp in Ghana were the beneficiaries of information on workplace harassment, bullying, and suicide prevention when they attended an interactive seminar hosted on that same day by the GDF's Welfare Department. And now for this week's wanted list. 43-year-old Handel Mervyn Lynch is wanted by the police for questioning in relation to obtaining by false pretense committed on Rajkumar Sinarain and Diane Budram. Last known address is given at lot 4096 Well Road, North Rheinveld, and lot 209 Prashatnagar, Georgetown. Also wanted is 50 years old Gopal Tawari, also known as Umkar. He's wanted by the police for questioning in relation to obtaining by false pretense committed on Gobalan Koalal, Narish Lashman, Narish Chitram. Dinesh Ram Sami, Ethan Gladstone, Zaman Bollers, and Wendell Harry. His last known address is given as Lot 73, Second Street, Craig Village, on the East Bank of Demerara. And also wanted is 26 years old Terence Spit, known as Son of Boyer Shots. He's wanted in relation to questioning for murder committed on Donald Brady on the 10th of September at North Rhineveld in Georgetown. His last known address, B Field Sophia, and Third Street to Mary East Bank Demerara. And also, please note that anyone with information that may lead to the arrest of the suspects is asked to contact the police on telephone numbers 333 or their nearest police station. And that's it for this week's security report. Goodbye.